This one is dedicated to Agnes Monica, who has inspired me to try to get famous. I actually had a teenager ask me this question. Pastor Steve, wait a minute, aren't tattoos and body piercing a sin? Hmm, cool question. Now to answer this, I'll assume that you take the Bible, Christian scriptures, as your authority. So, the question, is it okay with God, is actually the wrong question, because this is not a spiritual issue. The question you should be asking yourself is this, is it okay with my family, or my school, or my workplace? Because tattoos and body piercing have nothing to do with spirituality. They have to do with your parents' culture, or your culture. Let me show you what the Bible does and does not say about this subject. Now, some Christians incorrectly use two scriptures to condemn tattoos and piercing. The first one is this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28 says, Don't cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves like the pagans did. Now, people are like, see, see, Pastor Steve, the Bible says no tattoos right there in black and white. Okay, but wait. Let's read the verse immediately preceding this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27 says, Don't cut the hair on the sides of your head. Don't clip the edges of your beard. Uh, have you ever cut your hair? And uh, I doubt many of you out there have full-grown beards. So, what's going on here? God gave this command to the Israelites because they kept running after foreign gods. The surrounding nations worshipped idols and their ancestors by doing weird things. One of the weird things was cutting themselves. Another was tattoos. Another was shaving the sides of their heads. These were acts of worship to their deities. And the God of Israel said, You're my people. Don't run after other gods by doing those things. The thing is, we are not Old Testament Jews that worship the dead. The regulations in Leviticus were not written to us. Here in the 21st century, when you shave your heads or tattoo names of your grandparents on your shoulder, does it have anything to do with worshiping them or other gods? Unlikely. There is a huge difference between remembering your grandpa and worshiping him. So you see, we are no longer under the Old Testament law, the regulations. If you choose to be a Christian, you are under an entirely new covenant. So, let us turn to the New Testament, where some people like to misquote 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. And it says this, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And therefore, people say, see, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. No tattoos, no body piercing, no coffee. It's addicting. But, if you read the whole paragraph in 1 Corinthians, this is an argument condemning sex with prostitutes. Not tattoos, prostitutes. Big difference. Guys, extrapolating the biblical text to make it say what you want it to say is a big no-no. We don't do that. However, before you jump up and down with glee and call up your friendly neighborhood tattoo artist to make an appointment, I do have to point you to a very important scripture. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Hmm. You need your parents' blessing first before you go get a tattoo. Now, so you sit down with your family, and you explain to them that you want a tattoo, and your parents are like, cool, go for it. Well, I do have some rules for you. First rule is this, do not stick a tattoo on your neck, your cheek, or your forehead. Keep it in a place that is not glaringly visible. Trust me, if you get a tat popping out on your neck, you'll only be able to get a job as a rock star or a bouncer. Second, girls, don't put anything on your upper back till after you get married. Walking down the aisle in your wedding dress with a big black tat on your shoulder? Tacky. Third thing is this. Never, ever, 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 ever tattoo your girlfriend's name on yourself until after you are married. What do you think? Do you have anything to add? Leave a comment right here.